Uh, here we are at SHOT Show 2011. Jeff Wimmer, President and CEO of Spec Ops Brand, uh, did a little bit of design work for us too. This is our tactical messenger bag. This is the large size. And you know, just to give you a quick overview, a couple of the key features of the bag. We put our gridlock system all the way around the outer three surfaces to make the thing more versatile. And at the same time, you know, people like to attach pouches and things like that. We also want to offer a little degree of concealment for an operator, especially somebody on a mounted patrol in Iraq or Afghanistan. And that was the impetus behind the bag. One of the things you can do is when you look inside, we actually have our own gridlock on the inside of our high-vis yellow interior, which has become a Spec Ops trademark. As you can see on and on the side note, 100% made in the United States. That doesn't mean just because it's made in America you need to buy it. It means we can afford better quality control. And of course, we can get the product exactly right through production runs, et cetera, et cetera. And we're never forced to make a decision whether or not we're going to sell a product because it's built right in our factory, keep the quality high, keep the prices realistic. Okay. And every dollar we're spending is keeping somebody in Texas fed. <laughs> yeah, darn right. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's all the esoteric stuff I gave you. But the fact is, yeah, you know, it's a it's a dollars here, dollars stay kind of scenario equation. Yep. So we're proud of that, but that's not the sole reason we do it. Okay, just getting into some features and benefits of this bag. Uh, I'm a former bike rider, bike racer, and a courier many years. And so uh, eight years, actually, I never owned a car. I rode with a messenger bag on my bike back in the 80s. Another lifetime. But that being what it is, one of the key things I always used to get find extremely vexing about a messenger bag was is you couldn't get inside the bag without having to completely undo the flap and open it up. Now that's that's the de rigueur of any bag, but in this case we went with a nice oversized zipper top so you can still get inside the bag. And that's how I've been using it for two days, three days. Oh yeah, now. I mean it becomes instinctive. It's yeah. like, you know, what, what the heck? I mean, And I can and then, swing it to one shoulder and I bring the zippers over, bring it to the other shoulder. Still oh, yeah, good to it's, go. just, it's just one of those things where if, you, if you're thinking about using your gear, there's a problem in the gear design or there's a problem with the user or both. Usually gear complicates the path of the user. The user doesn't complicate the path of the gear. So our goal was, is hey, it's intuitive. You pick it up, you start using it, you figure it out on your own. Bingo, home run. The gear's doing what it's supposed to do, not impeding the performance of the person using it. So anyway, you know, big oversized, just some basic stuff on the actual features and benefits. Oversized reverse pull zippers. These are USA made YKK zipper sliders and reverse zipper chain, which is the number 10 zipper, the biggest they make for the pack business. Self-healing zipper, so if you tear it up or bang it or ding it, it'll, it'll a couple strokes of the zipper, it's back on, unlike Cosmolon zippers, which like on the ACUs, once you break a tooth, it's down, it's on the ground. These are self-healing zippers, they keep going. Standard in the backpack industry. Another thing is, with our product, for example, we put a grab handle on our messenger bag. Something that at first people are like, what do you want that for? We're like, well, you know, you never know. This thing could be carrying yeah. four, you know, 400 rounds of length 7.62 for all we know. Yeah, on the we way hope, home last night, that was pretty handy getting it off my shoulder for oh, a while. Oh, yeah, right yeah. on. When it's all loaded up with catalogs and stuff yep. or whatever the load payload may be. But one of the key things, and you see this on a lot of cheap import stuff, they don't sew the handle all the way through. Speaking of sewing all the way through, this is 420 denier pack cloth. 1,000 denier solution dyed Cordura, and in between the two is a thing we call Dura Panel, which is actually U.S. Air Force rated fuel blivet PVC. In other words, it can sit at, it's, rated, it's temperature rated to sit out in the desert at 140 degrees full of Jet A or whatever, or, you know, minus 50 up around, you know, in the Aleutians. So it's just a really tough stiffening agent, if you would. So it's a tri-laminate pack cloth, Dura Panel, Cordura. So the gold standard being quarter. So and then you can see how we attach our shoulder strap. 6061 heat treat aluminum, double tri bar tri glides, rapid adjustability, easy to adjust. Big guys like us need to open up, smaller folks drop them down. Rapid adjustability, really simple to do there. And look inside, it's folded through and stitched down. Box X stitch, four on top, four on bottom. You ain't pulling this shoulder strap off this bag unless the bag goes. Now, I'm not a little guy either, and uh, height or weight, and this thing is fitting me just fine. Yeah, and you know, it's cool thing about it is, is because it is an asymmetrical, the way we attach the shoulder strap, it's attached off the back edge. So, kind of like the old German am ammo cans were, where they're carrying their 20 millimeter stuff, you know, they're, they're off the side. So, it's really, it's really a comfortable bag to carry with that regard. It radiuses the body, big boy, little boy, doesn't matter. Shoulder pad, critical aspect. One thing I used to hate, was a plain strap because you know even I don't care how tough you are after a while the weight of the shoulder pad starts to wear on you this is closed cell foam in a three and a half inch tubular webbing tube 
that we then sew our webbing to. So you've got a non-floating shoulder strap that doesn't crinkle up, doesn't twist around, no Velcro down, no nothing. It's just absolutely bomb proof. You can use this as an M240 gun strap. I mean, that's the whole idea behind it. Absolutely tough. Again, the gear is just something you use, not something you have to think about. Exactly. So it's a total no-brainer on that one. Wrap-around product design. As you can see, the bottom of the bag, there are no seams. It is a true wrap-around design. Our patented battle buckles, which exceed any specification out there. Something about the buckles I like to explain to people. The reason we put that X on there and the tactile grooves for grabbing with gloves, the X is, this is the most common buckle to break is the female of a, of a, of a side release buckle. People call them fast X buckles, that's actually a trademark. We call ours battle buckles because we put that stress diffuser, so if it takes a hard hit, that actually keeps the hit from actually impacting the flat surface, hits an uneven surface that doesn't maximize the vector, doesn't break the buckle. So we patented that and the U.S. Patent Office gave us that one. Uh, easy to adjust, you can cinch it down, great big zipper pull type handles, you can get them off there. Quick thing about our zipper pulls, we build these in our factory. This is a diamond braid nylon cord with a polyester core that is heat sealed before we turn it into a zipper pull. We heat seal the cord, run it through here, you got two sealed off ends, we drop the national molding zipper pull on there, and we have a little press that crunches it down. I mean, it's about, it's like, it's like it's riveted together. We've had some stuff for years and we've never failed. Yeah, they, they don't fail. Because no. it's a really annoying thing when your zipper slider comes off. Something we put a lot of extra time and effort into. So there it is, the Spec Ops Messenger Bag. And it's great for walking around a trade show. Yeah. But with our intent and purpose was, is that with all the mounted patrols in Iraq and Afghanistan, and primarily in Afghanistan, a guy can load this thing up, put personal protection on the inside or the outside. I mean, you can kit this thing out like a three-day assault pack but it doesn't have to be worn on the back. Yeah. Hit the prone, throw it out in front of you if you're in a shooting scenario, and the ubiquitous ID window. Gotta have that on it yeah. if you're gonna take it anywhere. <laughs> so there it is, 100% made in the United States, proudly, and far as long as I own the company, it will be. Awesome. I can give you some feedback. I've been, uh, uh, when we were playing with it and thinking about it, and when you see it like this, you see that the uh, top kind of folds in, right. and I was wondering how that was gonna act with this thing full. It's no problem. Like I say, that's the that stiffener in there is working, doing its job. Uh, even though it's not, you know, like a secondary attachment in here, I've hadn't had anything fall out, and I've had this thing. Well, it was full yesterday and the day before with all the oh, catalogs, yeah, like you say. Yeah, so we we tested this thing. I've got 12 acres on our property, and we have tested this thing. West Davis, a former Army Ranger, in here somewhere. We tested this thing with. We took 35 pound bags of bird feed. So, and loaded them, and then we just took the thing out and just humped it around for hours over a period of a few months, just making sure that everything was right and getting it all set up. Then we filled it full of all kinds of crap. M4 magazines, loaded mags, all kinds of crap, just to see if we could you know, drop it on Stress the ground, it. see if stuff would fall out. You know, yeah, it's, it's not a perfect closed system, but that's not what it's supposed to be. No, it leaves the access, too. Correct. Now, there, if somebody doesn't want it this big, there's a smaller size, correct? Correct, yeah, we make one that's about one-third smaller which is uh, hanging right over there on the wall. But you can see that when you just lay them along each other, match them up, you know, it's, 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 it's not quite a third smaller, but it's, it's volumetrically, it's, you know, it's a little bit shorter and a little bit smaller, and just fewer cubic inches, and it's, you know, it'll still hold a full-size laptop, et cetera, but we like the big boy. Yep. Because we tend to... So especially for a show like this, yeah, you can't have it Oh, yeah, room. totally. But, you know, to and what we're doing is we're running another meat. bag inside of this one. So the idea that once we get too much stuff in it, we're just going to pull our camera and what out and then have the big bag for the weight. Oh, yeah, heck yeah. You know, and just key things about Spec Ops brand products that, you know, come from my commercial fishing background is bar, redundant bar tacks everywhere. I mean, everywhere you can put a stress point and check it and tack it, and we do it. And, you know, we use, you know, reverse zippers up here. I mean, this is heavy-duty ballistic mesh. We put that on there just because, and it's ballistic mesh because it used to be the stuff they used on a lot of tactical vests. It's this big old heavy stuff. And then, of course, our UV, UVA rated heavy vinyl window for putting documents, put a passport in there, whatever it is. So, you know, although it's kind of fun to talk about going around the trade show, writing instruments, you know, you can turn around and take this thing right into the field of battle, load exactly. it full of all kinds of warfighter equipment. And that was our goal. To, to offer an alternative to the three-day pack, that was our goal. So you know, we sold we sold almost nine, almost ten thousand three-day packs to the Department of the Navy. The THE pack. THE pack. We're a big fan is, of that one as well. Yep, is issued to uh, CBs and I believe a lot of the recon, I mean not recon, a lot of the uh, units of Marine Corps going overseas right now. 
So, you know, it, it's just an alternative, different way of carrying your payload, and uh, based on our background, it's something we felt we thought we knew a little bit about. Awesome. So, yeah, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, heck yeah.